Hi Home Video Makers! If you search for the word mask in Movie Studio or Video Pro X Manual, you're going to find 61 results about masks and masking used in various ways. In this tutorial, I'm going to concentrate on basic black and white and grayscale masks. This is part one of two. In this part one, we'll look at the basics behind black and white and grayscale masks. In part two, We'll look at other mask types and other uses for masks. So in part one, I'm going to take this video plus this video to make a composite video showing parts of both video clips, like this split screen showing part of each video, a smooth blending between the two video clips, and part of one video in a shape showing over the other video. I'm going to be using size position rotation effect to resize and position masks so you should be familiar with the effect. I suggest that you watch my tutorials on using the size position rotation effect and keyframing before watching this tutorial. I'm using Video Pro X16 for this tutorial, set up to replicate what you see in Magic's Movie Studio 2025. I have two videos on the timeline, one taken in the summer on track one, the background track, and the other taken in winter on track 3, the foreground track. I'll place the one on track 3 aligned below the video on track 1. We now only see what is on track 3. What is a black and white mask? Magix includes a series of masks under the Templates tab, Image Objects, Layer Masks. You can see that there are some that are solid black and white, others that vary from black to white, that is, various shades of grey. Masking tools make use of the luminance, or brightness, of the various parts of a mask to cause parts of other objects to become transparent or opaque. To start, I'll use one of my own masks. You can create your own masks using an image program like Microsoft Paint or Affinity or Paint Shop Pro or Photoshop. I have one that is half black, half white. I'll drag it to the timeline on track 4 and change the duration to be the same as my video clips. We see just the black and white image, with black for the left half and white for the right half. To make this into a mask, go to the Effects tab, Video Effects, Chroma Key, click on Activate Black-White Mask. We now see the video on track 3 at the left and black at the right. Why? The black part of the mask shows whatever is on the background track immediately above the image. Why is what was the white part black? Because white shows whatever is on the next higher track, the foreground track. But, since there's nothing on a higher number track, you see black by default. This will become clearer in a moment. I'll move the mask from track 4 to track 2, and immediately we see the video that is on track 1, the background, at the left, and the video on track 3, the foreground, at the right. So the black part of the mask makes whatever is on the next higher number track, the foreground, transparent. Thus we see the background track. The white part of the mask maintains the foreground image. When I run the mouse over the mask object, you can see a downwards pointing arrow at the left of the object and at the right of the name of the object, alpha, which is the effect that we applied. The arrow can be flipped upwards by clicking on it. This inverts the mask, making the black part opaque and the white part transparent. Now we see the foreground image at the left and the background at the right. I'll flip the arrow back. Keep in mind what the arrow does. Downwards is normal, upwards does the opposite of what the mask is showing. I want to make it clear here that the background image is whatever is on the next lower track from the mask track that has an image or video on it. The foreground image is whatever is on the next higher track from the mask track that has an image or video on it. This does not have to be the next track. The next track could be empty. So, for example, the background could be on track 1, the mask on track 3, and the foreground on track 5, so long as there is nothing on the other tracks where the mask is located. What if you want to make a soft transition between the left and right images? For that, we need a mask that varies from black to white. However, there's a trick that you can use. With a mask selected, 
Go to the sharpness effect and apply artistic blur. Now we have a blend or transition between the images. You can adjust this and play with the quality for further smoothing. Try this on different types of masks. I'll remove the artistic blur effect. I just happen to have a mask that goes from black to white with a gradient and I'll put it on track 2 off to the side. We can see that it's solid black at the left and then part way along the black starts to get lighter until it gets to pure white towards the right. I'll replace the mask on track 2 with this one and give it a chroma key alpha. Now we have a wider blend of the two images. I'll delete the mask and now try out the Magix masks. Go to the Templates tab, Image Objects, Layer Masks. I'll select number 09, the white circle on black, and drag it to track 2 between the video clips. With these layer masks, Chroma Key Alpha is applied automatically and we can see the foreground image where the white circle is located and the background image where the black of the mask is located. Now the circle is too small to see the dog. This is where size position rotation is needed to move the mask. With the mask selected, I'll go to Effects, View Animation, Size Position Rotation and click on Apply Effect. I'll switch the width from pixels to percent and holding down the left mouse button, drag the mouse upwards to zoom in, making the circle bigger. Then drag the mask image on the preview monitor to get the circular mask over the dog. Be sure to not drag the anchor point by mistake. So, we have the foreground image with the dog in winter within the white circular part of the mask on a summer background. Flipping the arrow inverts the mask and we see the dog in summer from track 1 within the circle and the winter scene outside of it. That was with a black mask with a white shape in it. Back to the layer masks. What happens if we take a white mask with a black shape, like number 32, and put it in the place of the mask on track 2? As expected, we see the track 1 video in the black part and the track 3 video in the white part. I want to move the square to be centered with the dog, so I'll go to the size position rotation effect and apply it. Note that the mask image size is the same as my project image size. I'll drag the image to move the square over the dog. Again, be sure to not drag the anchor point by mistake. Uh-oh. Look at the left and top. The video on track 1 is showing. This is because anything that is outside of an alpha mask object is black, so we see the background image. We need the area outside of the mask image to be white. A user on the Magix forum, named Gid, came up with a simple solution. Right click on the mask object, background design, background design, click on the black square beside the color to open the color panel, and select the white square. OK, OK, and now we correctly see the foreground image from track 3 on the part that is outside of the mask. Of course, you could always flip the arrow on a white with black mask. Then, moving the mask around works normally but you would probably have to switch the foreground and background files around. Try these out for yourself and play around with different shapes of masks. That's the end of part one. Go on to part two, if it's out, to see how to use transparent images as masks, multiple masks, effects masks, and more. Thank you for watching. Till next time, make movies.